My group and I traveled to the South Bronx to see how education, violence, and gentrification changed over the past years. So we traveled to near Hostos College and interviewed some of the people around the college and in the college on Latinos in the neighborhood and how they felt that education, gentrification, and violence has changed over the past years. Realities of life is taking toll. Even Jesus Christ will shake my soul. Please tell me what price to pay to make it whole. Take control. I'm making dough, but not enough to blow. JOs, they lost my flow, but they yo, I don't trust the soul. The soul, I know we need to. He's even free to meet you halfway. You need you. Alive, trying to survive the legal. I leave you lost. Mount you on the cross. Whip you like a horse. Sacrifice your life to a higher force. Then I stomp your corpse. It's the Bronx, of course. Recognize the accent when the last. So when it comes to the South Bronx and education, you know, Saul. He came to America at a young age, not for education purposes, but because he was having family issues. He went and got his GED, and is even a certified mechanic, but is still having tough times, you know, making it through the day and paying rent and things like that. However, although, although Saul has not really been in school lately and things like that, he said how it has gotten better and he sees a lot more kids more interested in school and going to school with their friends than you know in the past you know in the past the kids and stuff were a lot more gutsy now they're actually you know trying to go to school and make a difference in their lives when i got education in puerto rico i uh went up to fifth grade then i came to the united states the education at that time was better here it's always been better here than over there so actually i came here to ask family issues but uh, yeah I, I finished got my, my gd and also got my uh I told myself how to speak English. I started getting papers and reading them and, and, and watching TV in English and practicing with like little cousins and families and that's how I began to speak English. Education in the past years, I mean, I've been out of school, but it seems like it got, it got better. And education is, is, is preparation to better yourself. If you don't have any type of education or type of skills, you don't know where. Education-wise, I don't see if there's ever changed. I mean, like for our young students now, as myself included, my mom has taught me majority-wise is that you have to do what you need to do in order to be successful in life. When we interviewed Sana, you know, she said a lot of girls her age are getting pregnant and, you know, are kind of interested in school, but they still go to school because they know they have to lead for examples for their, for their kids. They already messed up early in life, so the most positive and best thing they could do is you know, set a good example for their kids and hopefully they could be somebody important in the future. In my school, I know I act up a little bit, I ain't gonna lie about it, but I see us running around here, you know, you know, majority of us young girls have a child. I don't think, I mean, if you're really urged to go to college, then I can see us going to college, but majority of us is. When we asked her if we feel that a lot, if we feel that kids are going to school more, you know, she said, yeah, she sees a lot more people going to college and things like that. So that's really good. Well, I see a whole lot of people go here, so, yeah. Even though they said by the year 2015 or something, there's going to be more Hispanics in here. That's what they say, yeah. Than anything else, yeah. And there, but there's also a good side of it. We have a lot of Hispanics that are well educated. Eileen said that education is very important and it is key to speaking out for what you believe in and you know not letting the government take advantage of you. Because she said, you know, even though sometimes a college degree has its limits, you know, what you learn in college is very important, especially when it comes to speaking for what you want to stand for and being taken more seriously. Somebody who has not gone to college, sadly, you know, is not seen as, as not taken as seriously as somebody who actually did. People are becoming aware. What they, it's like we are between the wall and the hard rock. What are we going to do? We can't go to the government anymore. This is not working anymore. So we have to get educated. I always tell people education is freedom. You know, it, 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 especially uh, 
that's the problem. Men, but you know, <laughs> especially women. We have to start this already. There's no more this, you know, the, the husband and the wife and the kids and the mother stays home. Exactly. The, 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 that's not, that's antique. I know, but a lot of, you know, a lot of Spanish people do still live like that. Of course they do. Of course, but it's getting harder. It, yeah, it's getting harder. Not because of us, but because the government makes it harder for us. Well, I guess it's all traditions. We've got to get out. You can it see in college, your mind opens even more. And you have options other and, Well, and things that you never heard before you hear there. And then you start opening up your mind. Because when I went to college, I said to myself, wow, what is that? I never heard this before. And I never heard that before. And, and you know, you pick up stuff. And then you become educated. And education is important, especially for women. You know, don't take offense to it. Okay. But women have to educate themselves. And no more saying, well, you know what? I'm going to grow up and I'm going to get married and I have two kids. It doesn't work anymore. If you don't mind me asking, what college did you go to? I went to here. But on the other hand, I can tell you that the Bronx is getting much better. Mm -hmm. Really? You think this part of the Bronx, the South Bronx, is like, it's cleaning up? It's cleaning up, okay. yeah. When we talked about violence in the neighborhood, Sana said that when you go more down towards Grand Concourse, she said that it's really bad over there, but it's not as bad as like near Hostos College. You would have to go down more towards Grand Concourse. But she says, you know, like, it's not as bad as when she was younger, things used to be more, you know, dangerous and things like that. Majority of it, it's okay, I guess. But if you go farther down, it's horrible. Other than that, it's, it's cool. Shadow detectives? Or police officers? Yes, actually. We have security guards in every floor. Um, we do have ID passes to get past. If you don't have one, then you will not be able to get inside our school. Um, does that make you feel safe or does it make you feel like they're treating you guys like criminals because I you're minorities? I think it's ridiculous because why would you give us IDs if you see us every morning, every 8 o'clock, 8.05, you see us coming here, good morning. Your class goes here, you see it all the time. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's a, a, a protection thing. I appreciate this. When we asked Saul about violence, you know, he made it clear that there's violence everywhere. But violence has really gone down in the neighborhood as there are more police on the corners. There's more surveillance cameras. You know, people are getting charges and things like that. So, they pretty much know their limits and... People can't really afford to get into trouble anymore like they like they used to. It's, it's violence in this community. It's violence everywhere. You know? what, is, everywhere what have you noticed you in this community? Like? Actually, I can't just tell you what I noticed, but it's, it's, it's actually gotten down. It's gotten down a lot. It's, it's gotten down. Cameras, security. Do you see a lot of police officers? Yeah, like they definitely. Yeah, they definitely enforce the streets. Police officers every point, all the time. So. Nowadays, you know, people join either a gang or a group to feel part of something to be. You know, whenever they don't find a home, their attentions, but they'll find it with the other. You know, we put a whole bunch of teenagers together, it's gonna be chaos. So there's no course of coordination or way to actually guide them. So pretty much yeah, that's peer pressure. Also, yeah, yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Yeah. when you go up in like, the garages. When we talked about gentrification in the neighborhood, Eileen told us that you know the government is really trying to like get the Latinos out of the South Bronx as they're, you know, getting rid of all the bodegas and building, you know, bigger places and places that are expensive and things that they can't really afford. And it's causing a higher class of people to actually come to the South Bronx while, you know, like, the, they're pushing the Latinos into, like, public housing. She herself even said that she got all of the people she knew in public housing, out of public housing, and into permanent homes. However, the government still continues to raise the prices, which causes them to go back to, you know, public housing and things like that. And, you know, it's sad. You know that all these bodegas, it's going to go up, they're going to go. Yeah, because the rents are going to be like, like being Manhattan. They're trying to gentrify the neighborhood. Parts of the Bronx? Yes. Grand Concourse, I don't know. I think because it's going through a... They're building a lot of stuff. You can see if you go to, from 138 all the way to 161st, it's very different. It's not the way it used to be. They put trees and they put the old um, the lights, the old post lights. Um, because Yankee Stadium is there, so they're jumping up the ramps. 
it is sad. I feel I feel very sad because what are the people where are they gonna go? Where are the people gonna go? Yeah, where, where? You know, things you know, there's no affordable housing at all. And so I think that um, you see I come from from the era where we used to fight for civil rights. You know, and we used to um, get make it better for the but now I don't see people doing that. I don't see the, the, the camaraderie the, the the community getting together to fight. Even though now I think people are more aware. A little more aware because of everything that's going on, you know. And um, it's like we're being pushed aside again. Again. And if we let it happen, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? We have to get together. And it's not about Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and Chileans. We're Spanish people. It's the one people. If we get together, we can do something. With, uh, where I think it was 67 and Grand Conference, that used to be when my husband bought out a phone and said, why are you buying this phone? This and now, I'm so happy he did. Because where am I going to live? The way things are. You just can't move. Say, well, I'm going to pack and move across the street or move in Manhattan. No more. We're being condensed. And we have to look at this. We have to, we have to open our minds and look at the environment and try to understand what's going on. Because what's going to happen in the coming 10 years? I heard, uh, what was his name, Bruno, I think he was the Commissioner for Housing or something. He said in the radio, real loud, he said, if you cannot afford to live in New York, go. We created this country. It wasn't just only me. I know. Us, we did this. You know, and it's sad that after we built all of this, we're being pushed aside. I helped a lot of people. Do you feel like the government helped? Well, you know, one of one of the worst things that ever happened while I was working is that we placed families in, in permanent housing. And then the Bloomberg administration, the program went down. So everybody who got an apartment lost it. We're talking about whole families here. This is unacceptable. This is not I moved my whole building in one year to permanent housing by myself. Even the commissioner came to see me because he didn't understand. I said, it's none of your business. I know what I'm doing. That's exactly, that's right. Because we have to take control. And we have to take power. Okay? And now all of my clients go to the apartments. And they're back in the shelter system. We visited Hostel's College to see how engaged, you know, the school was and, you know, helping Latinos to be better educated and to be more involved in school, things like that. And, you know, when we went to Postos College, they were having a fair, and it seemed to bring people all from all over the South Bronx to the school just to be engaged into, you know, what the people had to say and, you know, what the people had to share and things like that. So, you know, it was really good experience. They had a lot of things that you could have done. They had a book fair where we met a lot of people who helped us to get a better perspective on, you know, Latinos in the community and how education, gentrification, and violence has changed. In conclusion, the majority of the people in the South Bronx said that violence has definitely gone down more in the neighborhood as there are more police around and there are more surveillance cameras and education has gotten better as people are going to school more and is more interested in graduating college. As for gentrification in the neighborhood, people have said that, you know, the people pretty much stayed the same, however there are a higher class of people coming into the neighborhood as the bodegas and the other places in the neighborhood are being broken down and new places are being built and prices that are being put on these things, people can't really move into them or buy them as a business. So what do you say about the South Bronx? About the cheese? You love it? Do you see any difference in 2008 to now? Things have changed. I mean, like what? 